So if our web is stateless, like we discussed in our last episode, how can we do things like remember who's logged into a various website and make purchases on, on various websites like Amazon and, and so forth? So let's go ahead here and um, draw this up here. We've got our, our client again, and we've got our fancy keyboard here, and it's going to be connecting to our server with some sort of request. And the first request is always going to be stateless because we've never done anything before. But let's say we do some sort of, of login in, in that request, and the, com the, the response comes back from the server and says, yes, you're logged in. How do we remember that we're logged in so that the next request that we use here says, hey, I'm, I'm logged in. There are one of two ways. One would be a pure uh, stateless form. So let's write that down here. And I'll put that in quotes. And what that means is we maybe um, have send our credentials with every request saying this is who I am and this is how I can prove who I am. Maybe my username and password goes uh, with, with every request that I, I send. And so any future response um, uh, relogs you in, does whatever you want, and comes back out. Uh, but that can get uh, a lot of extra information in each request and a lot of extra computation on the server. If we can remember that we're in a much better uh, space and so that's uh, what we might want to do. So we re remember uh, what happened before. Um, and so what we can do then is we can give say a, a token here in our response. Maybe it's a you've been logged in or here's which user you are going to count at. And now instead of the request including all the information with the username and password, we only have to re return with that request that token that was provided to us as part of this response. And so we only have to do a little bit of information. We get that token back and that is verified and we say, oh yeah, we know who that is and go on uh, from there. And that can either be built in, so let me do an A here, that can be part of the, the HTML and that could be the server generating that token and it can be um, via a um, hidden input. So that's one way that we can do it. Or we can do it uh, with the browser. And the way we do this with a, a browser is with what are called cookies. And you may have uh, heard that term before. And what a, a cookie is, is over here on the browser there is some file. And we're going to call that file a cookie. And I can't give you a good explanation for why it's called a cookie. But this is just plain old text. And the web server is going to say, store this, to this token on, in a file on the web browser. And the web browser is automatically programmed that any future request that goes to this particular server, it will also include the contents of that file as a cookie response back to the web server. And so the web server can get that token in, in the cookie. And so we can, we can either do it explicitly through the HTML that we generate, or we can tell the browser to do it for us automatically. Now, some, some guidelines here that we want to re remember. We want these to be small. Whoops. Because the, the size of the cookie is, is going to change how much information goes in this request over and over and over again. So we don't want to make that large. We want to keep that small to, to allow those requests to go quickly through the network. And, and so that's the first thing. And we need to remember that they're insecure. 
and they're insecure from from two perspectives they're insecure because they travel in this response they re travel in this request right here so anyone in the network who is not trustworthy can um, go ahead and s decide that they're going to snoop and if we don't do anything specifically on our web server to keep track of those things we're in trouble so they're they're insecure from the network perspective but they're also insecure from the machine perspective they're stored on this user machine right here and so that means if anyone has access to this machine they can look at those files and see what's in there so uh, we need to really be careful about what we do with, with cookies and there's all kinds of things that different websites do to try to prevent malicious users in the network from being able to um, look at the response token and replicate being that that user but um, we'll just assume that our framework like rails or some other framework like Django or stuff knows about these truths which they do they know that they need to be small and insecure uh, and 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 try to help out now they can do a lot with the security of it but they can't do a whole lot with the size it's up to you as a developer to make sure if you use a cookie that you keep things small if you decide that you want to make a giant cookie the framework's not going to be able to help you uh, and and so that is is your responsibility as a developer to to make sure that that is a a true statement right there so these are our cookies they're automatically done by the browser the server says hey here's a cookie store it the browser says got it and it's always stored associated with a particular website so that every future request that goes to that website will get the contents of that cookie and there might be something like an, an expiration date on it that is um, part of the, the cookie standard um, and and you can say things like expire uh, when the web browser closes expire it in when you know 30 minutes from now or whatever but in in general those are extra details the key here is this cookie and and making it small so an example is rather than this token including your username and password so it automatically gets sent back in instead what it should include maybe is your user ID okay uh, another reason for that not just because of size um, is, is that we want this non modifiable okay and this is true in in a lot of Modify. because if that data gets modified on the server and we store old data on our web browser there can be a conflict between the data we think we have and the data that we should have so if we use something like IDs for users IDs for orders and and those kind of items then it'll be very easy for us to connect with the server and let the server have the update information but if we store objects in our browser there there are high chances they they can get stale very quickly and then wh which version do we have do we use the version that comes from our cookie do we use a version that's already in our database uh, it can be really problematic so you want to make sure that you, you know, keep it non-modifiable small and assume that there's a high level of insecurity in, in these cookies that hopefully the framework that you use describes how they deal with that issue but with that in mind you can log into Amazon it can send a token so they can remember who you are and then you can make your orders and it knows that those belong to you and not someone else without having to repeat that information over and over again